Hello everyone, my name is Emmanuel and in today's video we're going to discuss how to resolve the price mismatch values within Google Merchant Center. There are two different areas that this issue can appear, that is the website and also the data feed. So I will now explain how to check and resolve these issues. First, let's understand why you are getting price match issues. Google Merchant Center has a feature that allows Google's bot to check your product landing page and update the product listing information if the price info is different from the landing page versus the data feed. This is especially useful if you change the price during the day where the data feed has not updated yet. It helps your product listings to have the freshest possible information. However, it is essential to note that if you do not have this automated feature enabled, your data feed and website still need to show accurate product pricing. If the price mismatch happens frequently, Google will no longer use automatic updates. There is also a possibility that Google may suspend your account based on preemptive disapproval due to price mismatch. Now let's have a look and check how you can find the issue. Once you are logged into Google Merchant Center, you can find the issue within products underneath diagnostics. Now within this account, I do not have this specific issue, but if it is, it will show mismatch price page crawl around here. So you can then click on view examples and then click on the product or go to all products. And if it's actually on all products, you can then just click on that specific product. What we want to do is go and scroll all the way to the bottom and you will have your attribute values. So the most important one is the information found on your website and the raw feed attributes. The value within your information found on your website needs to match the value in your data feed. So as we can see here, we have $39 as the information found on the website, but also in the data feed. Now in your case, as you're watching this video, most likely this price is completely different. So first you need to check, is the price in the raw feed attributes actually correct? So you can see $39 if you can confirm against your e-commerce platform that this price is correct, then you can move on. If the price is not correct, then you need to contact the support team of your data feed solution to make sure that this is the valid price. If you have a sale price, make sure that you submit a separate sale price attribute for that price and leave the price attribute as the normal price that you had previously. So let's assume that we know the price on the website is incorrect. What we want to do is we go to the product landing page. So we can copy this URL, make sure that you copy it uh, and not just navigate to your own URL. Because if, for example, you're using Shopify, uh, Woo WooCommerce or BigCommerce, you will most likely have a specific URL with the variant. So for Shopify, you will have something like var variant is and then a numeric value. With WooCommerce, you will have attribute uh, name and then the attribute value as a query string. And for BigCommerce, you will have the SKU and then equals is the SKU value. Uh, for other platforms, I do not really know, but these are the major ones that uh, I use for my clients. And this is the most likely setup that we use. So let's go and have a look at the website. What we want to check is that the price here, $39, is in fact the correct price. So in some cases you might have, as you can see here, an original price and a sale price. Now I've added this uh, HTML website just to have an example, but the $39 needs to be after or underneath the new sale price. So $35.95 is the price that the customer pays. So this value needs to be shown first. So if I just show you, so if I just change the HTML, this is what you should see. Now, of course, this is not the actual 
price. So we will just reload so that we see what it was originally. $39. Now there are two additional areas that you need to check that the price is correct. We want to go and right click on our page and click on view page source. What we want to do is go and find the open graph attribute. We can do this by typing in OG colon price. So now that we have found OG price and the amount, we can see that the price is $39. Now if you have different variants and the prices are different for each variant, this price might be completely different because it will show the first selected price of the variant instead of the selected variant itself. As we can see in this example, the base price is $49. So the first selected variant shows $49. However, if we go to a different color, the price changes. Now if we view the open graph price, we can see that the price shows $49. However, it's actually $60. That is because the first selected variant, i.e. the black one, is $49. The reason why it's not an issue in this case is because the structured data is correct. We can do this by checking the URL. Let's, let's copy the $60 one and now we go to the rich results checklist. So we can do a test and then if we select the product information we can see that it is $60 and not $49. Because this matches in the data feed Google will not look at the open graph price amount. However, if this said 49 and it detects this is wrong, then it will indeed look at the open graph price amount. And this is then also incorrect. And that's why then that you get price mismatch. So if you have both structured data correct and open graph correct, then you will not have any issues within Google Merchant Center. However, after you have updated your open graph tag and also your structured data tag, you need to go to Google Merchant Center, the gear icon, go to automatic improvements, go to item updates and enable automatic item updates for both price and availability. If you don't do that, then the price and availability will not correctly update based on the structured data updates you have done. So that is how you find the issue to resolve these specific issues because each e-commerce platform has a different coding. You can find my other videos which detail how to resolve these issues. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below or contact me directly.